Hello everybody, welcome to the class today. I'm Nolan Clark and in this class we're going to be drawing a cute little hedgehog. I have some awesome new techniques to show you, so follow along as I show you step by step how we do that. So I found this cute little picture on uh, Pixabay and Chris asked if we can draw a hedgehog so here we go. So inside your PDF there's the, the color version Then I've converted him to grayscale to make it easier for us to draw and then there's obviously a little sketch template if you want to just go and sketch him out using that. So if you are a patron, you can go and uh, download those guys. There's the, the link. To the, um, to the website, if you're a patron, you can go and get not just that PDF, you get the edited version of this class, plus hundreds of other classes and uh, handouts from all my previous classes as well. So feel free to go and have a look at that guy. Alrighty. So looking at this, it seems like there is just an insane amount of detail that we need to draw today. Because we've got all this out of focus stuff here in the background. We've got all these spines and all the hair detail here around the face and the and the body. And then we've even got all this grass. So lots of line kind of work to do today. But I think it's going to be fun. I think we're going to enjoy this one. So I do have a whole new technique that I do want to show you. You've often seen me, let's take that away, and just get some spare paper here. In most of my classes, you see me using just a, a sheet of paper, with which I've now scratched over with graphite, just a, a 9B graphite stick, just covered it full of graphite, and then I use a cloth to, to, to basically draw with and, and block in broad areas. So the other day, I bought a little gadget. I bought this guy over here. So it was advertised as a, as a, an eraser for drawing. And I thought, oh, that's cool, you know. Similar to a, a needed eraser, just a, a more solid shape. So I bought the thing. And then when I got it, it was clearly not an eraser. So I put it one side for a while. And then uh, the ladies realized, but that's just a, a, a makeup blending sponge. <laughs> <laughs> but then, and, and then suddenly the the penny dropped and I knew what it was and, and what we could use it for. So basically what you're going to do is you can use this guy instead of your cloth. And I found this gives me even smoother shadings than the cloth. So what I'll often do is you can use it with the, the scratched... Um, on the scratched paper, just by picking up... You, you rub it over the paper like this, and then you you use them to, to cover your paper. But now you've got this sharper edge over here as well, so you can get little finer, finer bits too, which is pretty cool. And then if you need to go darker, I, I take this guy, and then I just scratch over him with a, a knife to get... Um, Graphite dust. And that I keep just in a in a in a container like this. So now you can also just tap in here for a bit more darker lines. Or if I tap them in the back edge over there, we can get more darker shadings.
and I'm not pressing hard on the sponge whatsoever. But look there, look how beautiful and and gentle and, and smooth these these shadings are using that. And because you haven't pressed hard or anything like that, you can come in with the eraser and erase it at any time. No problem whatsoever. So you can obviously now use that, that rounded edge over there. You can use this rounded edge over here, or you can use the tip. And we're going to be using all of those today to draw this guy. So if you don't have this now today, then you can still use your cloth to, to do the broader areas. And for finer areas, just use your, uh, your blending stump. Yeah, so I got uh, I bought this one, um, and then obviously after after the ladies told me what that's all about, then uh, I noticed them. I went to go and look at the dollar store by the makeup section, and there was a you could buy a whole bag of them, like six of them in a bag for next to nothing. And I've I've since noticed you get them in all sorts of different shapes and sizes as well. So feel free to to play around with those guys. Alrighty, so we'll start off. Let's bring the the photo back in and just do a little bit of little bit of planning here before we before we tackle this guy. So we always start at the back and then we work our way forward, right? So we got to do that out of focus grass over there, and then we'll tackle our hedgehog, and then we'll do the grass in front. So let's start off over there. So the big trick to get that to look um, far away is to make it out of focus. So you'll notice that like here in front, you've got all, everything is in details. You've got nice sharp edges and, and so on, crisp details. At the back there, everything is all out of focus and sort of just blurs into each other. So what we'll do is we'll block this guy in. You can see there's nothing that's spider white at the back there either. So we'll block it in just with a basic tonal value, something like that. And then we'll just add some, some random little textures in there as well. So I'm going to start off here just by using the, the paper. So I'm going to rub over there and the back edge of that. You can also use your cloth if you don't have this guy. And I'm just going to gently cover this back area up. You can see it covers up quicker than it does with a with a cloth. So I'm pretty stoked about this little that I finally found a use for my my little sponge. <laughs> so I'm just using little circles. I mean, gee whiz, look how quickly we've we filled in this background with some fabulous smooth tonal value. Insane. Okay, I'm not gonna bother getting it too too even. So what I have done here is for today I've set up a, a, another camera. I've set up a side view for us. Like that. So I'm just going to leave it that like that for a few for a few minutes or so, just to show you what I'm doing. And maybe what I can do is just give me a second, and maybe I can bring up Maybe I can just bring up that and you can see when I'm how I'm tapping into it. There we go. Alright, so I'm gonna use this this edge over here. That rounded edge over here, because we don't want any sharp edges in this background. So I'm gonna tap that into the graphite dust. Like this. 
and I'm just going to tap. into the background like that and because you're not using that rounded edge there's no no real sharp edges coming up okay so that's what it looks like from the side let's go and take a look and see what does it look like from from the front so at this stage there's still quite a bit of um, graphite loose graphite dust lying there but if you now get rid of that then you end up with that a look like that Right, so you don't know what I'm doing, so I'm going to and what I do with, with something like this, and if you don't have this, you can use the cloth as well. Just take your cloth, put your finger inside, tap it into the graphite dust, and then just tap down. Just use little taps like this. Because your finger's round, you also you, you'll get the same the same kind of effect. In there. So feel free to use to use either. So as I'm doing this, I'm using the the photo as a reference just to give me a rough feel for what are we seeing and, and what goes where. And that way, I know I'm going to get a, a, a similar look. But obviously, it's never going to be the same. Or we want to something that looks similar. And then we're right for a while. So here and there, I do see a little bit of a a liney effect here and there. So I'm going to just use a a few little downward dragging motion. So when you put this down, also make these marks random, so that you don't get a pattern. All these marks must look different. And you can make some of them a little bit darker and so on, just by going over the same spot a few times. So I'll even just use the tip of this sponge. Um, Sue's asking, uh, could you use a blending stump to do this? Um, I don't really think so, because Unless, you know, if you're using a blending stump, un unless it's a really flat point, um, then then I suppose you could you could get away with it. You dip that inside your your graphite dust. Um, but like I say, you have to be careful here in the in the in the distance because you don't want to get too much detail in here. Everything must be soft edged and out of focus, and the blending stump tends to give you hard edges so give it a try but just be careful that you don't end up with those hard edges that we don't want yeah I'm just going to add a few little darker bits because as we come forward it is now gradually going to get into focus and things do now start getting a little bit darker and more a um, little bit more detailed so you have sort of got that transition area here where it transitions between 
the the out of focus stuff in the back and the in focus grasses in the front. Right, I think I'll take this just a little bit further down. So that when we got these other grasses in front here, then they will overlap this. Same over there. I think maybe we'll bring that down a little bit further as well. Now we've got a nice little silhouette on our on our hedgehog too. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna use use just the tip of this just to smudge in a few little sharper edges. Let me show that from the from the side. So I'm just using the tip. But I'm 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 not letting it create any hard edges. So I'm going over it multiple times like that. Alrighty, let's get rid of that and see what do we look like. So if it is looking too spotty dotty, then just use just a, an edge, a flat edge, and just go over it like this. And that will also just smudge everything. So you're basically blending all those little marks that you did into each other like that. And the other thing you can do is you can take areas like, let's say, for example, there. Can you see there's a bit of a repeating pattern over there? Just rub over it, and you're blending those guys into one larger, little more of a, more of a mass. And there you go. So I do see that there's a little bit of a, it's going to be a bit of a halo around this hedgehog. So I'm just adding a few little guys over there. And of course, if you've got areas that are now too dark, you can just take your kneaded eraser and just tap out little areas that you want to go lighter. Not a problem whatsoever. Everything is 100% erasable at this point. You can erase this all the way back to white paper. Cool bananas. Okay. One background done and dusted. So let's tackle this, and then we'll tackle this, because this here overlaps, or this overlaps that. So how on earth are we going to do that? If you look carefully, all you see, these little spines all overlap each other. And then you've got different colors in them as well. It goes from white to black, back to white again, like a like a zebra. Even if we bring that, you can see there's even browns in between as well. So it's all sorts of just little random tonal values. So all we need to do really is get all these little random tonal values just as long as they're going in roughly the correct direction. Can you see? There, 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 and then starting to point up in their direction. But even then, these guys coming over here are crisscrossing each other like this, so they're not all going parallel to each other. So you can be quite, quite rough. So I'm thinking that if if we take our um, erasing pencil, or like your, your, your Tombow Mono, you can take one of these guys and you can easily erase those um, the spine effect. So if we can start off with the sponge and the tip of it and we get ourselves um, a bunch of dark lines that we can erase back into, I think we should get that effect. So let's give that a bash. Let's see, maybe I can do that. Let's see if I can do it in a way that you can see the the side and the the front view at the same time. Let 
let's go there. All right, so what I am going to do now is I'm just going to just bring that into here. I'm now just going to tap the front into that that graphite dust, just the tip. And I'm now going to use that tip, just the absolute tip, like this, with a very gentle touch. The minute I see I have to press hard, then I know that's my cue to pick up some more. So that's a super gentle touch, and can you see that? It's going to give us a nice little effect. So we will not just have to be patient to do this. So we have to fill this up enough to uh, to be able to erase into as well. So as I do this, I'm very careful to follow the correct directions. And also just roughly the length of each of these uh, these spines. I just want to get them similar. You don't want them suddenly too short or suddenly too long. You can see I'm just doing a few and then I'll tap back into my graphite dust to pick up some more. Now you can see why I, I set up the side camera because uh, you can't really see where I'm drawing when I'm using the sponge. So if you do have any questions, just uh, fire away. I'm checking the chat box and stuff as we go along. Alrighty, so I think I'm going to just go back to Let's go back to there. You know now what I'm doing, so you don't have to see every every mark I make with a with a sponge. What we need to do now is just get more into this little area, yeah. Just to do start defining this. That little forehead piece. I was carefully working that in there.
Okay, so we've got that basic look now. So all we need to do now is just keep filling up. And what I'm going to try and do now is just go over certain places as well, just to get some of them darker. Because now there's, there's more graphite in that area over there. Because you've gone over the same place more than once. So then you ended up with those multiple layers. Don't rush this. I'm not attempting to rush it. But you have to keep a super gentle pressure on the sponge. Otherwise these marks of yours are now going to become too too broad and then you'll just lose the effect. Um, Sue was asking earlier about using a blending stump. Now here a blending stump would work because you can take this guy, tap it into your your graphite dust and then you can add little little distincter guys. I think it's just going to take you a bit longer because now you're literally drawing literally drawing lines. But absolutely here it's going to work great. Yeah, you can do that. See that? Just to get us. So we can see what's what. Let's just get rid of all of that. And now as I add these guys, I can also just use the use the photo as a guide. I can see certain places are darker than others. And by using that as a guide, it helps me see those random or, or create those random marks because these marks on the hedgehog are random. So when we try to actually fill up a few places with a darker, because that way I can then come back in and erase into those darker areas. So it's okay if you do lose essentially all the all the white of the paper or most of it. That's fine. It's not a problem. I must say, if you're doing this, you're just sketching this on your own, or drawing this on your own, it'd be quite, uh, it's quite peaceful. I certainly never thought I'd be sitting here drawing with a, uh, a makeup sponge. Right, so I think I'm going to use the um, the blending stump for now, and just some graphite dust, <laughs> just to get some like little detail ones here on the edges. And if you do, just make sure they're all slightly different lengths, slightly different angles. I 
and then inside here as well this is now where you can use this to to get little darker areas too Alright, so what I'm going to do now is now I'm just going to gently rub over all of this. What it's going to do is just give everything that's white just a light layer of tonal value. That's going to allow us to now get our darkest darks and our lightest lights in. So we'll start with the lightest lights. So I'm going to take my, my pencil eraser use the, the Tombow, he's got a harder point, and a nice hard pressure. And start lifting out some nice light, bright spines. Remember, this is now all about layering. So we have some mid-tone guys, and now we're getting some lighter guys. Then we'll add some darker guys. And who knows, if we haven't got enough layers, we'll add some lighter guys back in over them again, and so on. Alrighty, so now I'm going to use an 8B pencil and just do the same thing. Using the pencil. And I'm pressing reasonably hard. I want to get these guys nice and dark. What I'm doing now is just going over some of these lighter guys and just rubbing over them a few more times just to really get them to be nice and bright. Just removing the last little bit of, of graphite. Ready. 
Let's see, this top shape here is not quite where it needs to be. Hey, it needs to go up a little bit higher. That's better, eh? Luckily, everything's quite bright. It's quite light on this end over here. So I'm quite happy to to lift out quite a bit. And then it gets darker as it goes down over there. And then this area here is darker, so I'm going to add a few more darker guys. Yeah, that should be fine. Alrighty, so there we go. That's that sorted. So now we can move on to this, the white hair area and his face. So now I'll use this, but I'm just going to tap out most of this. So I'll take that and just tap out most of that. Look at all this extra... Um, graphite dust that was inside there that I'm now just tapping out. I don't want any of that because he's going to make this area here too dark. So basically what we're going to do is just lay a, a, a fine layer of tonal value down there. So you can either use this or you can use a cloth. Both will work. But now what I'll do is when you initially start there is now still graphite dust in this right so you see there I popped in the ear and let's see here underneath the chin let's pop that in and now as you sketch this out that graphite dust is becoming less and less and less See there? So you're automatically getting a lighter and lighter tonal value. So I'm still using a, a stripey effect. That way at least we... We're sort of starting to get that look of the face. It's reasonably dark in this vicinity over here, so I'm going to just go over this a few times. Just to try and get that, that tonal value correct. Okay, so Pat Minis asks, can we cover with graphite dust to get it dark, and then just use a Tombow to erase and get sharp white lines? Um, well, we are going to do that, but not don't go too dark. Um, Remember, the minute you've put graphite dust down, you can you can lift it out, but it's never 100%, 100%. .00. There's always some of that graphite dust that gets into the texture of the paper that your eraser just simply can't get in there to remove again. So just be careful of going too dark. So I'm just making this face of you little bit darker and I better just mark my eyes and stuff before I before I promptly go and lose them. Let's make them also a little bit darker. Um, okay, you're asking about over here whether you can make that really initially really dark. Um, what you can maybe do is give it the same kind of layer that we like we did over here. You can give it that same kind of a layer over here. And then come back in with your darker lines. Yeah, you can do that. Because here you can still erase pretty much back to white. Or like this kind of a tonal value. 
But if you go too dark, like for example that tonal value, you're never going to erase fully back to white again, unfortunately. Okay, so here, see the, the face casts a, a shadow on the neck area over here, on this chest area. So by making that dark, instantly you're getting that nice little... You're bringing the face forward instantly by doing that. Yeah, I think that's, that's probably good enough. Just a little dark around this area here as well. Let's darken that up. Only by the mouth. And I think that little chin area there, the bottom jaw is a little bit smaller. So I'm just pushing him up. That's fine. Now I'm just going to give the rest a quick little layer just to get rid of the white of the paper so that we can erase into that. I think that should be that should be fine for a start. Alright, so now it's back to the eraser. So I'll use my use my Tombow again, make sure it's nice and clean. So you can either rub it on your pants or a piece of cloth. Or also you can just rub it on your on your kneaded eraser like this. Use the eraser to clean the other eraser. It works works beautifully. <laughs> Fabulous. Alright, so now again we have to just keep a good eye on these directions. So let's maybe Let's see, I think I can make this let's make that a little bigger. Let's maybe even zoom in a little bit more as well. So yeah, you can see these hairs are, are quite long, so give nice long flowing strokes. And it's really important that you work on these directions as well. Keep a close eye on those directions. This vicinity is like that other ear. So I'm just going to gently put him in with the 8B. Not pressing hard. Because I do need to get hairs over that. So you just flick those hairs over there. Like that. Every now and again, I'm just cleaning my my eraser as well. Because if it's not clean, it's not it's not erasing. And you're just wasting your time.
really. I think that's about as much as we can do now. You can sort of think of this as just a, a bit of a planning. A planning on where each, what goes where and where these little hairs go. So now we're going to go back to the pencil because now we need to create little darker hairs that are in between these guys. So you do want to work in between these little um, erasers, well, erased lines that you've done now. Because otherwise you just lose all your lights. And make sure your pencil is nice and sharp as well. Okay, let's start getting this eye in over here. So I'm going to just add that little edge over there. Press hard. Now you've got to make as though there's hairs overlapping that. So I'm going to use little flicks inwards like that. And then it leaves little gaps. And it looks like there's hairs overlapping there. So here, don't be shy to, to sharpen your pencil as much as you need to. to make sure you get a nice sharp, uh, nice sharp little hairs. So there with the nose, I think I'll have to start off just with a, a softer pencil, or a harder pencil, I mean. Let's go over to maybe an HB. Just give this guy that basic tonal value that he's got. Then we should be able to go back to the to the eight B. And then we can get these shadings into that nose. I'm not gonna do too much effort into that nose as I've never I've never studied the hedgehog's nose of you. So if you get it slightly wrong, nobody's going to know. <laughs> if you just get as, as much of these little basic details in your eye for a way, you're good enough. It's fine. Let's maybe just add a little bit of a pick out a little bit of a highlight or so here and there. Maybe there, there's a little highlight over there. There's a little highlight over there. And that should be enough just to make this guy look, look shiny. Yeah, there we go, that's good enough. Here by the mouth, it's the same thing as, as by that eye over there. We've got all these little, um, what would you call them, <laughs> moustaches that are overlapping. So I'm going to start here from the bottom where we can see that there's a distinct line. But it's not actually a distinct line. There's, there's gaps in it because some of these hairs are now overlapping. So I'm just going to flick upwards like that in those directions and look there it makes it look like you have overlapping hair so you're basically drawing those those little those little whiskers nosy hairs <laughs> you're drawing them negatively Yeah, cool. So 
think I'll just put a, a piece of transparency or a tracing paper down here just to get some protection from my hand for all the stuff that we have now already drawn as we move across. So we get this eye in. It's really dark over there. It's getting that nice and pressing hard there. Same over here. Pressing really hard. We get this nice and dark. And let's maybe grab that HB again. And just do a little bit of a little bit of a shading in there just to get that A tonal value. And then it's back to the eraser again. Let's lift out a nice little shiny highlight to make that eye look. I look shiny. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And then here we do have all sorts of little darker hairs around that. So I'm just using the 8B. A little flicking effect. Let's get all those guys in there. And the same over here. Here's more darker hairs in between the lighter ones. So I'm carefully going in between the light ones with the dark hairs. Here on the ear, you can also just work in a few little, let's say a little bit of a darker shading just on that edge, but I'm not pressing hard, super soft, gentle touch on that. Here we could even use the blending stump just to, just to shade that in there. And that gives you that, that little effect that the, the ear is curling like that. There, I'm drawing the rest of that surrounding, but just using those same flicks like we did there by the mouth to get that same effect. And over here, so I match that tonal value going downwards in between all these little erasings of mine. And that's not going to show you the ear. Alrighty, so now you just got to take a look at the rest of the face, this whole area over here. Just look at the tonal values and add as many darker guys as what you need to roughly match that tonal value that you see in that area. And in the other areas where it's light, just work in here and there, just little darker bits in between, just for contrast, just to make sure that those lighter bits do now stand out. So what you basically can see is happening here is we've got, we're doing the same thing here as that we did there. So it's just on a on a thinner, smaller scale, eh? Because these little hairs are thinner than the than the spines.
Okay, let's erase a few little. Let's maybe just add some more tonal value over here for the chin. Just tapping down there just to get some more. A little bit more graphite down there. And now we can follow this around here. Yeah, I'm going to take some of these hairs and just make them longer like that. Those little flyaway breakaway hairs that have decided to do their own thing. Awesome. Okay, so here we still need some more tonal value. So we'll continue over here for a while. So obviously each hedgehog, just like us, they all look different. So I'm not going to panic too much about getting all these tonal values in exactly the right place. As long as it's similar, yeah, I throw away. Obviously, if you're doing a, um, a commission, then you'd spend a little bit more time working a little bit more accurately. Luckily, this one isn't, so. Okay, so here I'm also just negatively drawing in between some of these hairs just to darken up some of that chin area over there. Some nice little dark bits. Because these darks here lift up the, the whole face off the body. So it's important to get that in there. Alrighty, let's see. Over here, I think we can just we can add a little bit more tonal value there. So, because we, we know now where that edge between the the grass and the hedgehog is, just that we can work out some of these little these little hairs over here that form the edge of his body. And if it's a human or her, I'll try to look up beforehand to see if you could tell from the the markings or something, but you can't, so we don't know if it's a a boy or a girl today that we're drawing. Okay, and we'll just work this guy in, in between those guys, because that can't be as bright as that. This is sort of half in shadow. So just by going over that with a pencil, what happens is it now darkens that up, the overall tonal value. Cool, let's add one or two more longer guys over here now that that's finished. And yeah, you can also use the just the jelly, jelly roll pen to add a an odd longer guy in as well if you want. I think the, the eraser's doing fine today. The and I think we'll add little whiskers and stuff in right here at the end when we're done. Yeah, it's also still a little bit too bright, so adding a little bit more tonal value there. Okay, so now we need to lift out some distinct little hairs that are 
overlapping the the spines so what you want to do is erase but just go over exactly the same spot every single time until you've got a nice bright brightly erased hair and make sure that you see like here the the spines are going that way your hair needs to go in a different direction otherwise it's not going to stand out it's just going to blend in So as you raise them, just be patient. It does sometimes take a few few strokes before it, it lifts out properly, but it will lift out. Then what I'll also often do, just to sort of really make sure that those guys stand out, is I'll take my, my pencil and I'll just very give it a very, very thin little line just on the underside of each of those guys. You see there, just makes them stand out. Just like a little illusion. <laughs> hey, look at this. We're on the home stretch. Let's uh, turf that just to see where we're at. See what it looks like. Yeah, it's looking quite cute already, eh? All right, so let's tackle that, uh, the grass. So I'm going to be using the, the sponge again. In a similar fashion to what we did there. Now we're going to start getting some, just some grass. But now you're going to use some more um, longer strokes and, and a bit more bolder strokes. So now as you do this, you do need to be brave and go over your your hedgehog. Add them all sorts of different lengths, directions. You know, even some of them are lying flat. Maybe somebody's been walking bef there before. You don't know. Is this a park or what is it? We're not sure. And then over here, our hedgehog is actually casting a shadow on the ground. So all these areas over here can, can be darkened. Let me maybe just show you from the side. You can see the, the technique that I'm using here. So 
Just little dabs and taps, but I'm going to flick it up in towards the, the head jog so that it blends into the um let's go to the here so that it blends into the direction of the the hairs and stuff over there and then over here obviously now you're going to be just going over that with your with your grasses get stuff coming in from past the picture that so coming into the into the scene Yeah, I think that's enough for now. Now I'm just going to use the back. And whatever graphite dust is there, just to give myself some tonal value over here. Maybe I will pick up some graphite dust. It's not quite enough. So look what's happening now. You're getting those little these grasses overlap each other like this. So what we've got now is that the back grasses. Let's get a bit more tonal value there. And if I look on the photo, it does seem surprisingly dark over here. So let's do that. All right, so now we can add some other darker ones again, just for now. In other words, we're building up layers here now. Sound familiar, right? Eh? <laughs> That's exactly what we did. That's what we've been doing the whole the whole drawing so far. Just building up layers of stuff. Make sure I get stuff coming into the picture, in from the side, in from the bottom, in from the top, and so on, or going out the top. Okay, let's get rid of all that excess dust over there. And I'm just going to use my my eraser. And I'm going to start adding some lighter guys in here. So they start off thin, they do go a little bit broader to, towards, the, towards the bottom. And add each of these guys in as before at nice different angles. Some of them shorter, some of them longer, some coming in the picture, some going out, some just coming up like from here, and so on. So you find that once you get going, you sort of do get yourself into a bit of a groove, and it doesn't go, doesn't go too slow. I mean, obviously, I am now using the, the photo, just to get a feel for where do I need to put lots of bright ones, and where do I need to put lots of darker guys.
So you can see I'm using all sorts of different angles and directions the whole time. Some thicker, some thinner. Just to keep getting as much variety as what I can. Okay, so now I'm going to go over to my 8B pencil. And we'll also start getting some, some darker guys. And now what you can do is you can do use whatever is there and as your guide to create like he, um, his grasses going behind other grasses for example let's say over let's put one here there and i'll stop by the light guy go past him stop by that guy and go past him so now you've got that one grass going behind the other ones And that also now gives you a, a whole different layer of depth. And often you can just do it like little bits, little areas as well. Let's maybe put a, a guy coming in over here front of everything And some smaller, thinner grasses too. So you can now decide how full you want your grass, obviously. Decide when you want to stop. See there, I'm putting something that's now, something that's darker in between the grasses over there. We don't know what it is. And sometimes you can even add just little shadings as well, just for interest. And then we've got just a few little whiskers on this guy. Now that we've got our grasses in. Let's add a few over there. And if it's on that side, there has to be a few on this side too.
Alrighty. Yeah, I think we'll we'll call it a day on this guy. I think we've we've created a, a likeness of our of our hedgehog. Let's take a look. Yeah, I think if anything we could uh still go a little bit darker in this vicinity over here. Just to really darken up that little area there underneath the chin. That'll get that face to, to stand out a little bit more. Yeah, other than that, I think I'm happy. I'm going to leave him like, like that. Yeah, I think let's go to there. So I hope you enjoyed today's class. I really enjoyed it. It was great fun. Good luck with your uh, your hedgehog. I'll see you next time. Take care. Thanks for joining me today in the live class, guys. I really enjoyed that. That was fun. Hands are nice and dirty. I'm sure the face is too. <laughs> Let me see if I can find myself... Uh, a cloth just to wipe my hands. Yeah, yeah there we go. That's why I use the the little transparency over the over the drawing. Because you, you can see what your hand looks like after a while when you're working with the with the graphite dust. He's the guy that, that does that. But that's all right. Nothing that soap and water can't fix, eh? Guys, if you want to, I uh, uh, request a specific class. Let me uh, give you the link. On online art lessons, you go to the Have Your Say page. So I'll give you a link to that. There's your Have Your Say page. And then obviously if you want to, uh, if you're not a patron yet, you want to follow r the rest of my classes, um, go and take a look. Here's the, the link to, to online art lessons. You can head over over there and go and take a look at all my other classes. There's hundreds more. There's drawing, painting uh, in oil, acrylic, there's watercolor, there's pastel, there's pen and ink. There's tons. There's literally hundreds of other classes for a super good price. Go and take a look. You'll be pleasantly surprised. And then obviously you get access to all the, the edited replays of these classes and the handouts. So now I'm going to go and scan this guy. I'll add it to the to the PDF. And you can go and if you have already downloaded it, you can re-download it. And if you haven't, just give it a few minutes. You can go and you can go and download that. I'm glad you guys enjoyed the class. So next week we are going to be painting on on the, the the painting channel and i'm going to be painting a classic an absolute classic let's just go there i'll tell you what it is it's girl with sailboat and it's a nice impressionistic uh painting so just head over to the website. You'll see the, the link over there and you can join me for that next week. All right, guys. Thank you. Have a wonderful weekend. Take care.